Hey everybody, it's Luca Tonelli with the Solomon Group at Coldwell Banker Action. Welcome back to this week's episode of The Real, Wassa's Real Estate Show, and today we're talking all about escalation clauses. What an escalation clause is, how it works, some pros and cons involved in using one, Then I'm going to walk you through an example and how to be successful when using an escalation clause in the market. So without further ado, we're going to get right into the definition of an escalation clause. So an escalation clause is a section within the real estate contract that states a prospective buyer is willing to raise their offer on a home should the seller receive a higher competing offer within this clause. It will state how much more the buyer is willing to pay over the competing offer and their maximum spending limit. So how does an escalation clause work? Well, there's three main components. You have the original price, which is the purchase price that you're offering them. And then you have the escalation amount, which is the amount that you're willing to spend over a competing offer and then you have your maximum purchase price so this is the ceiling within the escalation clause the maximum amount that you're willing to escalate to now i'm going to walk you guys through an example but first i would like to talk about some pros and cons when using an escalation clause so we're going to start with some pros So I think one of the most common reasons that buyers do like using escalation clauses because it gives them some peace of mind knowing that they put their best foot forward. What do I mean by this? Because you're going up to a maximum amount, a lot of times this is sort of the buyer's walk away number. And if they don't get it at that point, then they knew that they gave it all they had. So they can walk away from it knowing that they put their best foot forward and also knowing that that was the most that they were willing to pay for that home. Now the next pro of using an escalation clause is that they can be beneficial in a case with multiple other offers on the table. Guys, as you know, here in Wassa, the market is still very hot and it's very competitive. It is a seller's market. So it can at times be unpredictable So this is a great tool if you just want to put an offer in up front because you might not know how many offers are going to roll in by the time the sellers decide. So instead of waiting, you can kind of put your best foot forward and then you will not have to change your offer as other offers come in because you'll have your best foot forward at the time of submitting your original offer. This is something that I've personally had success with uh, with my buyers in the past and a lot of them do like this route because it puts the ball in the seller's court from the start and then from there it's really up to the sellers on which offer they're going to accept now the third pro of using an escalation clause is probably the most important to the people listening or the people that might potentially use this tactic when purchasing a home, and that is it can prevent you from overpaying. Because the escalation clause is purely based off other offers coming in, that is what determines the final purchase price. So it prevents you from overpaying from the standpoint that you're only going to be escalating over other offers that are coming in, but as the buyer, you are also the one setting your maximum spending limit. So whatever you're comfortable spending, that offer will never be over your maximum amount. Now, this seems like a really good tactic to use when purchasing a home, but there are a couple things that you want to keep in mind. One thing that you might want to keep in mind is that this is not a great tool when there's no other offers present because the whole basis of using an escalation clause is to escalate over a competing offer. So if there's no offers on the table, then you're not competing against any other offers and this you don't have any other offers to escalate over. In a case where there's no other offers on the table, it might be a better idea to just go with a more traditional offer tactic. Again, though, that is something that you're going to want to consult your real estate agent to talk about. The next thing to keep in mind when using an escalation clause is that if the escalation amount is low, A competing offer that has slightly better terms but a lower purchase price may still be more appealing to the sellers. 
I know at face value it might be easy to see why the purchase price would be the most important thing to the sellers, but there are other items that go into the equation when offering on a house. So it's also something to keep in mind how clean your offer is on top of your purchase price. One final note on the escalation clause that you might want to keep in mind is that because you're disclosing the maximum amount that you're willing to pay as a buyer, this kind of eliminates the buyer's ability to negotiate. A seller, if they wanted to, they could reject the escalation and just ask for the highest offer up front. And this kind of puts you in a strange situation because you were willing to pay that if other offers came in, but again, it does kind of take away your negotiating power as a buyer. All right, now that we got some pros and cons out of the way, I'm gonna walk you through an example of what this actually looks like in practice. So we're gonna be using relatively easy numbers just to keep everything simple, but this is how an escalation clause would look within an offer. So if our original offer was $200,000, we would put an escalation clause in there saying, all right, we're going to jump the next offer by 3000 That's our price escalation amount, not to exceed $215,000. So how this would look, if another offer came in at that $200,000, then our price escalation would come into play, and we would automatically escalate up to $203,000. Now keep these numbers in mind because I'm going to go through some commonly asked questions when implementing a price escalation. So to hop right into it, a common one that I hear is how many times can our offer escalate? Now the answer to that is as many times as it needs to. So if an offer comes in at 200,000, we escalate to 203,000 and then another offer comes in at 210,000 we would automatically escalate up to 213,000. Now a common concern that I hear from buyers, which is a rightful concern, is how do I know that there was another offer that my offer escalated, right? What's stopping the sellers from just saying that there's another offer and we escalated up to the maximum amount? And I have some good news for you in this situation. The sellers are required to provide you with a copy of the offer that you escalated. So they have to provide proof that an offer actually came in at the purchase price amount that you escalated over. Another question that I hear pretty frequently is, can the escalation go above the maximum amount that we set? And the answer to that is no. Now, to give you an example of why this question usually comes up would be, if somebody offered, let's just say, 214000 and our maximum was 215000 the amount that we have escalated, while it says it's 3000 we cannot go over the maximum. So in that case, we would just go to 215, only 1000 over the previous competing offer. Now the final question I hear a lot is one that I really want you guys to keep in mind if you're going to go ahead and use an escalation clause. And this is what happens if a competing offer also has an escalation clause. Now the answer to this question is whoever has the higher maximum amount is going to get the house. And this goes back to how many times you can escalate because there is not a limit each offer will continue to escalate over the other one until one of them reaches their maximum. And at that point, the offer with the higher maximum is going to get the home. So in that case, that is an inherent risk with using an escalation clause because in the case that another offer comes in with an escalation clause, you're not really protected from paying anything but your maximum number or whatever maximum amount the other person had in their competing offer, you're going to be jumping it. So that is a risk that you do need to keep in mind when using one because if there's another offer with an escalation, most likely multiple escalations are going to happen and whoever has the higher maximum is going to get the house. Now the final thing that I want to cover today is how you can be successful when using an escalation clause. To start out, the original price that you offer is actually far more important than most people think it is. And this is because 
this sort of conveys to the sellers how much you actually want the house. If your original number comes in way below asking, and then your maximum is slightly above asking, seller might look at that and think, well, they don't really want the home, but if they have to pay X amount for it, they will. A lot of times I see it's better if you just come in a little bit stronger on the front end and then have your maximum up to whatever you're comfortable paying. That is just something that you will want to keep in mind when using an escalation clause. Another thing, and this kind of ties into the first one, is having a significant price escalation. If that number is only $500 to $1,000, a lot of times if there's slightly better terms within another offer, a seller might not be willing to accept something with a low escalation price because to them that extra $5,000 or $1,000 may just not be worth it. Now those numbers I just used were purely for the example that I was using, but it is best to talk to your realtor and understand the specific situation in which you're using the escalation clause and get their recommendations, get their feedback on what they think would be a good price to come in at and a significant price escalation. The final thing to keep in mind, guys, is that it is most effective when there are a couple other offers on the table. Again, using a price escalation if there's not gonna be a lot of offers on the table is not really the best case to use it. If there's two or three other offers on the table, then you're gonna have offers to escalate which is probably when they're gonna be best used and most effective. But if you're the only offer on the table, there's no other offers to escalate, which means that your offer is probably going to be a little bit lackluster. And that's because you can't achieve what the clause was made for if there's no other offers on the table. And that is gonna wrap up this week's episode of The Real. I hope that I provided you guys with some value. I hope that you learned a thing or two, so hopefully, you can go out and maybe use this tactic uh, to your success. So if you guys have any more questions relating to the escalation clause or just any real estate questions in general, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information will be in the description. Again, my name is Luca Tinelli. Stay tuned for the next episode of The Real, and thank you guys so much for listening.